Hello, good afternoon, everyone. So today I'm going to talk about Peto paradox, which is actually explaining why don't larger animals get more cancer. So the the theory of cancer is that the cell actually has a mutation in it. You know, something doesn't work well anymore, so they actually divide out of control. So they basically become a parasite in your body. So if you actually have cancer in your body, it's it's more or less equivalent to have a super powerful parasite in your body that can bypass all your immune system, suck all the energy out of you, take all the nutrients, and then kill you in the end. So the theory of cancer is that the cell actually have some problem with their genetic code. So uh, this can be usually during you know our the reactive oxygen species, which is too much oxygen, too much you know oxidizing power, or it could be some error during the replication. It could be some problem with your DNA uh, repair mechanism, so that DNA errors is introduced during replication or normal cell activities. So that kind of in error introduced into the cell result in the. A biological system or biochemical system doesn't work anymore, so they could actually disable one or two gene that eventually leads to cancer. So if if you kind of about come to think about it, if cancer is basically a symptom of you know error in the genetic codes, why don't animal with a lot more cells, such as a blue whale, get a lot more cancer compared to let's say a, a mice, which is only twenty gram? So. So this is actually been explained before. So the previous explanation is that uh, animals such as elephant has just much more anti-cancer gene, such as p53 in the body. But there are actually a few more, um, what is that called? A few more hypotheses that could be explaining because I believe that you, if you just have p53 that could actually uh, counter cancer, why don't we just uh, CRISPR a lot more p53 in? So apparently the the idea of that is not that simple, just like every single cancer cell in the world. They are very unpredictable and we do not understand how they develop. So there are actually two more group of scientists that try to work out some of the natural, um, what is that called, a natural explanation or hypothesis towards pyroteradox that does not involve uh, genetics and genetic makeup because even though we do observe that in, in elephant, it doesn't scale that nicely when you do and the, the what is that called when this organism grow uh, significantly bigger so genetic code itself is not the answer so that is why i'm gonna have to, that's why there's two more solution here that i'm gonna explain so before that let's go to a little bit of idea on Tomasetti and Volstein, which is actually what i explained just now so they have a very nice equation where they found the correlation between cancer risk per tissue and lifetime number of stem cell division basically you have more cell division there's a high chance that you introduce more errors and the chances actually increase exponentially so that's why you have the cancer risk is equal to minus one minus bracket one minus c to the power of l LSCD, where the LSCD is actually um, where lifetime number of stem cell division. The more division there is, and the more likely that is going to get cancer, so on and so forth. So if you actually um, try to work the equation out, the cancer risk is directly correlated with the number of uh, cell division that is in a linear or exponential relationship, depends on the situations. And one thing that you might need to know is that Pito paradox does not actually apply to intraspecies, such as we have found that a taller woman usually has a higher cancer risk, and a larger dog usually has a higher osteocarcinoma, which is the cancer of the bone, and so on and so forth. So, but the idea, but the problem is that among different species, such such as when you compare a blue whale to a house mice, which weighs a hundred ton and twenty ton, uh, respectively, has either similar rate of cancer uh, or you know blue whale actually has a much lower rate of cancer compared to house mice in general but that could be because of a sample size problem because there's very little blue whale in the world and we don't really understand how they work and there are actually certain animals that are not that big and not that small actually have a really high rate of cancer such as the Tasmanian devil actually have almost um, I don't know 80 or 90 percent of chance of dabbling in cancer and the cancer actually come from an infectious disease so the, the detailed description of that will be linked in one of the articles down below so that is the same article that i got this from where they talk about metabolic 
them related pathway of cancer probability in big animals. So if you actually have watched Kurzak video on the energy efficiency of big and small animal and why does big animal is a better option when you have the resources to do so, which is why in a in a in a world where the oxygen concentration is really high, you have dinosaurs and you have big insects because being big itself actually help you to conserve energy. So uh, the problem is that when you have a, a flat body, you have a very large surface area to volume ratio. So in animal, what you want to do or what you prefer to do when you don't have enough to eat is to have a very small surface area to volume ratio so that the heat, you, you get to trap a heat inside you and it doesn't actually just flow away as waste heat and you die. So the larger you are, the less surface area to volume ratio that you have. I think this is fairly uh, explained in seventh grade biology. So the other thing about this is that once you lost, once you have the advantage of not losing so much energy, you also have a much lower metabolic rate, which is why we don't eat as much as a house mice relatively. So we eat maybe like um, a three hamburgers a day, that's good enough. So maybe that's 10 or 5% of our body weight. But certain small animal like one of the, uh, one of the mice that is, I think the fastest animal in the world, the smallest mammal, where they actually need to eat more than two times of their weight just to maintain the daily activity. And if they don't continue to eat every single moment they have, they, they kind of they kind of die because the heat will just left their body and they will die. And that is why most of the uh, insect and invertebrate are cold-blooded. They do not want to maintain the body heat because they're so small, it's almost impossible to keep that heat in. Okay, so in this case, a larger body size will result in a much lower metabolic rate. So this such this lowered in metabolic rate also result in a low chance of toxicity coming into your body or in contact of your body because you know you eat less, there is less chance of you to ingest or to be in contact with certain toxin. And even if you make contact with certain toxin, you have such a small surface area, it is unlikely that it will affect much of your body and if you just affect your skin cell they will just die away and fade out you'll be fine uh, compared to let's say you got a drop of a carcinogen on your toe versus that drop on an elephant an elephant likely is not gonna have any any significant issue or significant uh what is that called? Uh, little rate because you know LD50 and all that with their body mass and so on. So it's relatively small compared to when you are a very small uh, organism. You digest a lot faster, you absorb a lot faster, and that's why the it's likely that the cancer will develop a lot faster when you are a lot smaller. So this also with the same thing where we have a much lower RS and cell damage because of a lower metabolic rate. You breathe in less oxygen, you oxidize less stuff, you have a less uh, um, RS damage and DNA error and also so on and so forth because we do know that RS is one of the main cause of DNA mutations and so on. So the third one is also the low cost of immune response. So if you actually get infected, you don't have to heat up your whole body to actually kill a certain thing. And it's also unlikely that 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 kind of infection will be a body-wide thing. So it's likely that the virus that affect you only in the nose will, will not be able to spread to your, your, I say your toe or you have a small wound on your leg, it's not going to be as significant as the same wound on a smaller animal because in, I mean, they're, they're just, you're just bigger so that you're able to localize the infection and that damage will not actually what is that called spread throughout the whole body rather than when you are a small animal you kind of have no choice because you do something immediately the whole body is affected okay so the next one is actually slightly more interesting in my opinion because they they are they're not uh, it, it's just so intuitive that i'm actually quite surprised and actually make me to want to make this video they, they're something called hypertumors so in terms of cancer, you actually cannot just get a cancer cell that have unlimited growth. So for that cell to continue their growth, they actually have to, what we call, uh, develop a kind of angiogenesis um, mechanism around it. So if you only are a cancer cell, you're not going to survive very long. So what you need to have all that energy is to try to grow, grow 
blood vessel around you or surrounding the, the the, the cancer cell around you so you can continue to divide so these are what we call a leading cell where to secrete something called TAF tumor endogenic factors so this kind of cell are usually the leading or you know the winning group in a cancer tumor where they try to grow all the blood vessels around them so that they can get more nutrient so when you are a small what is that called when you are a small animal uh, that factor get to your blood very very fast and that allows the growing of um, micro capillary so uh, yeah it, it allowed the grow blood vessel around the tumor really really fast to be developed and established so that the cancer cell can grow uh, into a significant mass relatively easier however in a larger what uh, in a larger animal you have more time for that to reach the blood the nearest blood vessel or for and the, for the blood to flow to that area so the other type of cancer will actually develop is what we call a hypertumor. So they're also aggressive cells. They're also rapidly uh, dividing. However, they are failed to s s sufficient. Sorry, they fail to secrete uh, enough tumor, you know, genetic factors to support cancer growth. What this is what we call the cancer cell that can grow but cannot grow blood vessel around them. So what they do is that they will grow around the winning cell because the winning cell or the leading cell has the blood vessel around them. So they'll try to aggregate around them and basically grow as their parasite. So it's a parasite of a parasite, which is the enemy of an enemy, my friend. So that actually starve the winning cell to death in the middle and so that they both die in the end. So when you're very small, it's, it's unlikely that the chances of that will happen. But if you're big and bigger and bigger because you grow exponentially, you know, you grow in three dimensions, it is likely that the, the, the development of hypertumor is going to starve your leading cells to death and eventually, you know, stop you from getting cancer. I mean, uh, it's it's it kind of logical in hindsight, but uh, I'm, I salute the person that think about all that thing. So if you wanted that uh, official uh, quote from the article, that tumors are more likely to that evolve hypertumors, sorry, uh, tumors in larger animal are likely to evolve to hypertumors, causing a negative correlation between case fatality rate and host body size, which is why a lot of big animals get cancer, but they do not die. So these are the two mechanisms that explain why a larger animal do not get cancer. So it might be able to help us to further research on how we can prevent more cancer in human being and eventually, you know, stop everyone from dying. So that is Peter's paradox and the two possible solutions. Uh, thank you for watching. Breakfast for a living.